I'm Judy Potter. I've been a member of the League of Women Voters, first Benicia and then Solano County for most of its existence. Uh, I've been involved with Great Decisions since its inception. Foreign Policy Association was founded in 1918, which we do know because we just celebrated its 100th birthday not too long ago. Um, and it was uh, inspired, um, it was dedicated to inspiring American public to learn more about the world. And its purpose was, it has been to serve as a catalyst for developing awareness, understanding and informed opinions about US foreign policy and global issues. Um, it was founded originally as the League of Free Nations Associations, chaired by a journalist, Paul Underwood Kellogg, whose name I didn't recognize, but when I looked him up, he's quite the firebrand and he was one of the original founders of the ACLU in the 20s. It was um, formed by a group of influential Americans from both sides of the political spectrum, including John Foster Dulles and Eleanor Roosevelt, who formed it in order to try to support Woodrow Wilson's efforts to achieve a just peace after World War I. And his proposal, his proposals for peace that included the idea of a world organization, later to be called the League of Nations. So the, so the organization was the League of Free Nations Association. They were hoping to increase support from in the United States for membership in the world body, but it didn't work. <laughs> anyway, so following the failure of the US to ratify the Treaty of Versailles and to join the membership of the League of Nations, the association changed its name to the Foreign Policy Association and was reconstituted with a plan to be a to a, a, an organization that would carefully study all sides of international questions affecting the US and to spread education and knowledge throughout the informed citizenry. citizenry. In the 20s, they were a number, it was based originally uh, in New York. And in the 20s, there were a series of Saturday luncheons that were put on uh, that were uh, that became quite popular. And there was a lecture series called Off the Record that started in the 30s that also was fairly popular. In the 40s, the Foreign Policy Association pioneered an international affairs weekly radio discussion program called The World Today, which aired on NBC. They, in the 50, excuse me, 50s and 60s, there, they, there were branches of the Foreign Policy Association uh, branching out to large cities in the United States. And some of those branches were forerunners to the independent membership councils that became the World Affairs Councils. I think some of you are familiar with our World Affairs Council. We have one in San Francisco here. So that FPA was a founder of those. They also did a publish a number of foreign policy reports and journals over the years and currently published one called the Headline Series. It's become known as and respected for its impartial comprehensive analysis of foreign policies. In the um, 1950s, 1954, in uh, Portland, Oregon, the then vice president of, uh, great, of the Foreign Policy Association started Great Decisions. He based it on a face-to-face -face active informal conversation set up where participants read a fact sheet before they met about a particular issue. And at the meeting, they aired their respective views and opinions in a respectful way which we do today about those issues. And after the discussions the participants would fill out opinion ballots and the Foreign Policy Association would tally the ballots and they were reported, they reported the results to the State Department. We continue to fill out such a ballot, all those who want to, and the re re results are now tallied and go to the White House, go to all the elected officials in Congress and to the State Department. So the idea being that, that the, after our discussions, our thoughts about what we think about issues can, can be heard by <clears throat> those people who are making policies. Let's see, the program picked up media attention, schools began to use it in the classroom and it gained national attention. Great Decisions is America's largest discussion program on world affairs. The current program model that we use now includes reading not just a fact sheet, but a whole chapter in a book that includes, includes chapters for eight different topics. We have nine this year, actually, bonus one, um, written by experts in the topic area. 
The articles are designed to be impartial, thought-provoking <clears throat> analysis on issues of concern to US policymakers, and they're written by experts. Each article offers policy options for US officials, as well as questions and tools for discussion. The Great Decisions webpage also provides helpful information, a list of acronyms and abbreviations. When you're reading these chapters, you can't believe how many acronyms and abbreviations, right, Jerry, that <laughs> come and go, and also a glossary of terms. In addition, they give us a list of suggested readings and um, for further, for, for, if we're interested further. Thought I might just mention that um, somewhere we have, I don't know if we want to put it up, somewhere we have a nice uh, list of the topics for the year, but I thought I'd just mention one of the topics that we're, the, our first topic this year is going to be on changing demographics in the world. And as an example of the kind of people that get to write these chapters, this author is Joseph Chami. I don't, I'm not sure of his pronunciation, who's a demographer. He's a former director of the United Nations Population Division, and he worked at the United Nations on population issues for more than 25 years. He's written many articles on population studies and on international migration and development prop, uh, policy, and he's a member of the Council of Foreign Relations. This chapter covers extraordinary demographic changes that have happened in the 20th century, the beginning of the 21st century, he covers the remarkable increase that we've had in growth of population during that time, the dis distribution of the population, the change in mortality rates, the change in fertility rates, how the ch current changing in the, the number of people in, who are aging in our population is going to affect our policies and international migration. He also deals with the equality of women and climate change as major issues to discuss. For those of you who don't know it, Jerry Hayes is a past mayor of Benicia. So he comes with authority and he's always willing to step in to act as moderator whenever I'm not available, as is Niles. And he's been a, we've, we've used uh, extra moderators to when we do breakout groups with Zoom and Jerry's been our, our, one of our regulars. So that's my introduction. What do you want to say, Jerry? No. <laughs> The first thing I want to say that you didn't say is that it's very hard to say no to Judy Potter. <laughs> <laughs> and, I, and, and I want to just comment at the outset that um, the moderator really is, is the important element of success of a program like Great Decisions and so forth. And Judy does an outstanding job. Um, you, you. Uh, when we have a, a discussion group, um, to avoid one person taking over the discussion, uh, and and other uh, situations, it's really great to have a good, strong uh, moderator that uh, gets us everybody back on the right path. Um, I want to start by uh, commenting about what what those of you who haven't participated in great decisions might expect by asking, have you ever had a real um, issue subject that you wanted to discuss with somebody and you asked a close friend uh, about it and about two sentences into their response to you, you realize that you really asked the wrong person. <laughs> and, and you're trying to figure out how to get out of this discussion now. Well, that, you know, it, it, it's especially these days uh, in some of the issues that have been so uh, controversial. I really uh, was amazed at the way Judy handled really controversial discussions. We, we got into a lot of areas and we found out that our neighbors, who may, some of whom we just met at a, a Great Decisions uh, gathering, uh, we didn't have a clue that they were had a, a background on the very topic that we were discuss, discussing. Uh, we were discussing one session about Korea, 
the two Koreas and the the, cur the current uh, president of South Korea at that time, uh, which was a woman uh, who was uh, eventually uh, uh, demoted and, and removed as president of South Korea. Uh, and we had somebody in our group who had lived in South Korea for quite a number of years and really, really helped uh, lead the group uh, and and educate us all about what was what was going on. Uh, you know, we had people who say, "Well, I visited Korea, <laughs> or I was there, and when I was in the army, that type of thing." But somebody who actually lived there, and uh, it, it's an amazing experience to uh, meet your neighbors, some of them whom you haven't met before and realize the knowledge they have uh, and, and that you can pick up on and learn. And um, the other thing is we, we uh, occasionally uh, would have a topic where we just run out of breath and run out of, the, of things to talk about in the allotted time. And someone would raise their hand and say, can we talk about this or can we talk about that? And Judy says, well, we have time left before they throw us out of the library. Uh, sure. And so we would get into other topics, topics that maybe we hadn't read about or had a video on. And, and so it was really like a group of neighbors getting together, uh, well-meaning, well-intentioned, uh, who really wanted to learn and share what they had. And uh, uh, on a personal basis, uh, uh, my wife who's standing in the, in the wings here will tell you that sometimes with me, you just have to learn how to shut the guy up. But um, it, it, that's when the, this wonderful moderator comes into play. <laughs> and uh, so it, it, it really was a great experience in, um, in educating yourself at uh, whatever, whatever age we are at individually. And uh, uh, it's, it's something that I think uh, the, the league can be very proud of um, having established and moving on. And I, and I too uh, uh, am very thankful and grateful for people who, who started this, Kitty Griffin, for example, uh, Lois Request, uh, Jane Keene and Niles, uh, they really got the program, got this program going and uh, have helped uh, sustain it ever since. So I've just stepped in and have been a very small part of it. But I would just say to anyone of you who are listening, uh, if you have the opportunity, uh, Zoom is okay. I mean, this is okay to be able to communicate with each other, but get, getting gather, gathering together in a group, and uh, and uh, Judy always feeds us too. Uh, I mean, there's there's coffee and there's a, a few little tasty things that she'll bring and she'll uh, get this person to volunteer and that person to volunteer to bring something. So uh, uh, we're fed and and. Uh, uh, patted on the head, and we have a good discussion. So it's been a great program, and I think very, very uh, beneficial for the league. I, I don't know that I that I actually I think it was in my notes, but I just probably skipped over it. I mean, we we usually watch a video. We ask everybody to read the chapter before they come, but we insist that people don't not come because you didn't read the chapter. You, you can always watch the video and share and or not share whichever you want to do um i i like to go through this opinion ballot just uh, the demographic information what, what kind of people come in I, I noticed this year that it says generally speaking do you usually think of yourself as a republican a democrat an independent or something else and this year under republican we got only 9.52 percent of the people responding democrat 63.4 and independent 24.7 and i looked up last year's and it was 11.1 1. 
And I do think that in previous years, it's been, uh, the, the mixture has not been so one-sided, which worries me a little bit, I just have to say. Also, we always note too that there's, um, there, well, there's tons of stuff to note here. We just don't have much time, but the group that comes, most people have that they're 67.2% of the people who come have a postgraduate degree. And another 9% have some postgraduate work and 19.7% in addition have at least a BA degree. So you're getting a group of people that are very interested. One of the things they talked, I didn't talk about, they talked about in the, uh, in, uh, we, there's a person from UC San Diego who's analyzing the opinion stuff. And she said that, that it's very useful for opinion polls to have information from people who are educated. The most opinion polls take uh, random groups and ask them, but the great decisions group is a group that has some amount of education about issues. So hearing what they have to say brings a different point of view for policy makers and decision makers. Anyway, any questions? And it's, you know, it's, it's not quite, I, it's okay on great on, uh, on uh, Zoom, but it is more fun at the library with refreshments. <laughs> so would be, we, we miss it. Hopefully, it doesn't look like it's gonna happen this year. The library told me that if we, um, they have to, if they do are able to open, they have to do, give six, six feet of space all the way around, which means 36 square feet of space per person. And that only means a few people in a room. So it doesn't look like we'll be able to use the library this year. So we have to keep fingers crossed for future time. Thank you for the work you and Niles have done for Great Decisions. It's a wonderful program. I want to know if there's any outreach. It seems like it's very heavily members in Benicia and Vallejo. And I was just curious if there's any other chapters. I mean, I know we're all the one Solano County, but I'm just wondering if there's if any other cities have it, or is it just the just the League of Women Voters that has it, has the Great Decisions? Is anybody else running it in our county? That's my question. Yes. If I, I could, I could answer that. There is a, a group that I think was started by um, Bob Panzer, who's in the um, Paradise, Paradise Valley Estates, and they have a, a very large group, but they're not meeting right now because they don't want to do it by Zoom. So they're <laughs> holding off. <laughs> so talking about the kind of things you're talking about, Judy. So yes, I do know of that group, Janice. Okay. Well, there I are other, Judy, I thought you might know that too. Well, there are other groups. I, I don't, I didn't look it up, but if you go onto the web, the uh, Great Decisions web site, there's a place where you, that's, that has a stuff about how to form a group and how to find a group. And if mm. you click on how to find a group, they'll, you put in your state and then they'll show you places I can't remember how much lower you get, but there are definitely other places around. AUW's put it on a lot. Other libraries sponsor it. I don't remember specifically in I our county. I need the specifics. I'm glad to hear that it's other. Yeah, lots other of other organizations do it. I think I think the P Piedmont. Um, I think that the Piedmont uh, uh, League of Women Voters does it, and they they do something we don't do, and that's an AM and a PM one. I've been I've been unwilling to to add more. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Myself. Well, in, in spite of our time here, I really appreciate Judy and and um, Jerry and also Niles as our backup there uh, to make this presentation. And uh, Craig put up this uh, visual about the upcoming topics, and that's very very interesting. And I want to thank you all.